from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass on this memorial of St. Margaret of Scotland. I am Father Tomasz Skibinski. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario. This Mass is offered in loving memory of her parents and her sister, Lydwin Redmond, in thanksgiving for many blessings received and for the spiritual, mental, and physical well-being of all her relatives and friends. We know that this tele television mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking our donor for this gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us first of all call to mind our failures and our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Margaret of Scotland wonderful in her outstanding charity toward the poor, grant that through her intercession and example, we may reflect among all humanity the image of your divine goodness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom, the fashioner of all things, taught me. There is in her a spirit that is intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, subtle, mobile, clear, unpolluted, distinct, invulnerable, loving the good, keen, irresistible, beneficent, humane, steadfast, sure, free from all anxiety, all-powerful, overseeing all, and penetrating through all spirits that are intelligent, pure, and altogether subtle. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God, and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God, and an image of his goodness. Although she is but one, she can do all things, and while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. She is more beautiful than the sun and excels every constellation of the stars. Compared with the light, she is found to be superior, for it is succeeded by the night, but against wisdom, evil does not prevail. She reaches mightily from one end of the earth to the other, and she orders all things well. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
is forever. Your word is firmly fixed in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. Your word is forever, O Lord. By your appointment, they stand today, for all things are your servants. The unfolding of your words give light. It imparts understanding to the simple. Your word is forever, O Lord. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Let me live that I may praise you and let your ordinances help me. Your word is forever, O Lord. <laughs> Alleluia. says the Lord. Those who live in me and I in them will bear much fruit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Then Jesus said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there or look here. Do not go, do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must endure much suffering and be rejected by this generation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We continue today our reading from the Book of Wisdom. And um, today we hear this beautiful hymn of praise towards wisdom. This wisdom that uh, has been present there with the Lord, she's being personified uh, as the one who, who has been there with, with God in all the work of creation uh, in, throughout the history of salvation as well. And this wisdom that is absolutely and definitely present also in our lives. This wisdom that is very different from our wisdom. Uh, we live in a society where, you know, everything is being so subjective, so personal. Uh, we think that we possess wisdom, that we possess answers to all the problems, to all the questions, all the dilemmas of human life. And um, very often we want to teach ourselves and be, you know, our own, uh, we can say, uh, we want to, be, to, to define you know, what is good, what is right, and what is not. And yet, the Word of God helps us to understand that our thoughts are not God's thoughts, neither are our ways His ways, but 
his thoughts, his ways are very different. Very different meaning they are much better and they lead us, they guide us so that we may not be confused, lost, so that we may not go astray. That's why we need this wisdom of God, wisdom that has accompanied the church as well uh, throughout the history, who has accompanied all the saints. Today we are celebrating St. Margaret of Scotland, this uh, amazing woman that lived in the second half of the 11th century. Her life was, um, we can say, uh, very much uh, tossed from one place to another. She, she was born in Hungary, but then uh, uh, as, 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 as a daughter of an exiled king, uh, then she had to go back, all sorts of problems. And yet in her life, she was guided by the wisdom, by the wisdom of God. And that's why she, we call her a saint today. She was later canonized in the year 1250. But, um, and so many others, I mean, we could probably, you know, make a whole list, a litany of saints, literally, you know, and speak how the wisdom of God guided them to the place where they are there, where, they, where they are today, which means in heaven with the Lord. But this wisdom, it's true that is intelligent, holy, unique, manifold, and, and all those attributes of which we heard. And as I said, this wisdom in the, you know, was understood always as, um, as a person. And uh, in theology, we speak of this wisdom in a number of ways. One of which is uh, the wisdom that has become flesh, uh, Jesus Christ. It is the wisdom that is, um, I'm saying so different from our wisdom. And uh, we know that the cross of Christ, uh, which is a scandal for, for some, you know, foolishness for the other, we know that it is a wisdom of God. And that, that's how it is called, a wisdom of God. And that is something that is very difficult to comprehend. And yet God chose uh, to, to manifest himself in his wisdom in such a way through the cross, through, his, through, the, through the cross of his son, Jesus Christ, and uh, who has really marked also the way for us so that, we may, so that we may, as I said, not go astray in our lives, but may be truly united to him. And this is, that's why we need to invoke, we need to ask for this wisdom, which is a gift from above, which is not something that we can give to ourselves, but a gift that we need to ask for uh, every day of our lives because we ourselves have lots of dilemmas, lots of problems, lots of choices and alternatives in our daily lives. And how do we know what is the right way, what is the correct way, how to live, how to uh, live as, as, as families, as single people, as elderly, as sick? Where, is, where, is, where do we look for this wisdom if not here with the Lord? And uh, she is able, she can do all things, all things. Really, she can help us to make correct choices. And the, the reading was saying, for God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. That means the person who lives in communion with him. And we know that also there is another person uh, whom we can assign this title to, the wisdom of God, which is the Virgin Mary. And sometimes she, she also has been compared to this wise woman. Wise because she has constantly adjusted her ways to the ways of God, even though she might have not understood everything right away. But she knew that to trust God, to trust his wisdom and his choice was a much better way of living. So today, as we journey towards the kingdom of God, and Jesus speaks about the kingdom in the gospel, when we ask for this wisdom that we may arrive, gain the, the kingdom of God, uh, which cannot be, in a sense, maybe grasped, touched, but is definitely become, it becomes visible. It becomes visible through the way we live. And the wisdom of God, Christ says, is, um, is among you. Is here. That's why we gather 
we gather every day to celebrate this uh, great gift which the Lord gives us every day so that we may walk towards him, that we may walk and um, arrive to this kingdom which he has promised us. Therefore, let us celebrate this mass really with gratitude, with thanksgiving for all the gifts that the Lord gives us each and every day. Let us now stand and together, let us offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church, first of all, for the church that has been called to manifest this wisdom of God in this world. We pray for the Holy Father, for all the bishops, all those who are, who are, been, who are called to be a visible sign of God's kingdom here on earth. We pray for all the baptized that we may really manifest this kingdom in this world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world that we live in, this world that is often divided by strife, violence, war. We pray for all those places, places where there is unrest, where people are suffering because of, because of hatred. We pray that uh, God's peace may reign over all. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for all those in our daily TV uh, mass prayer intentions book. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our our community prayer this month is for all those listed in the Daily TV Mass Book of Remembrance and for all the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the intentions of our hearts, the intentions also of the donor of this Mass, may the Lord listen to them and fulfill them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God Almighty Father, we ask that in your wisdom you may listen to those prayers we have presented to you. And we pray also for those intentions which we carry in our hearts. We ask you this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people and grant that we who celebrate your son's work of boundless charity may by the example of St. Margaret of Scotland be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Margaret of Scotland, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of St. Margaret of Scotland who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.